happy crocheters. This is Lindsay from windingrowcrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this very easy throw blanket. So here is a sample of the blanket we're making. The sample does have fringe but my final blanket I decided not to add the fringe. For this project we're using a size P or more importantly a 10 millimeter crochet hook. Sometimes this is also referred to as a size N. So definitely make sure it's a 10 millimeter crochet hook or the hook you need to meet the gauge. For this project, I am using the Bernat blanket yarn. I'm using the big ball of yarn here. And for my project, I used five skeins for a small throw, but depending on what size you make, it can take anywhere from three to 21 skeins, 21 skeins being for a California king size bed. This is a size six, super bulky yarn and I am using the color called Burnt Mustard. You are also gonna need a pair of scissors and either a large yarn needle or a smaller hook that you can use to weave in your ends. I'm using a size I hook, but any small hook would be fine. There are two small things I wanna point out about this blanket. First, that the front and the back of the blanket does not look exactly the same. The second thing about this blanket is that I really recommend you take the moment to check your gauge because with such big stitches, it's really easy to get the sizing off. But this can also be fixed by working less chains at the beginning or working less rows at the end. To get started, we're going to take our yarn, leave enough of a yarn in to weave in later, and we're gonna make a slip knot. Insert your hook and then create your starting chain. I put on the side of the screen how many chains you can use based off of the size blanket you want to create. There is a really nice chart in the written pattern that lays out all the different sizes and dimensions and yarn needed if you want to check that out. The blanket in the photo at the beginning of this video was a small throw blanket and for that blanket I chained 114 chains. The beautiful thing about this pattern is you can chain as many chains as you like. There is no specific stitch count and you can just chain until your blanket is as long as you want it to be, but you do want it to be the larger length. So if you're making a 20 by 30 blanket, you want to chain a chain that is 30 inches long, not 20 inches long. Once your chain is complete, all we are going to do is half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. I am going to work in the back bumps, but you can work into the chain whatever way is good for you. And we're simply going to work a half double crochet in every chain across. This blanket is a very easy two row repeat. So we just have a few rows to show you and then you can get working on your own blanket. When you reach the end of row one, working half double crochets in every stitch across, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Now we are going to work a yarn over slip stitch. This is also called a half double slip stitch. And we're going to be working in the back loops only. So you can see the V at the top of our stitch. We would normally work under both strands like this, but to work in the back loop only, we're gonna go down the center of the stitch and out the back. So there's your front loop. This is your back loop. So we're gonna go in here and out the back. To create the yarn over slip stitch, we're gonna yarn over. Then we are going to insert our hook into the back loop only. So find your first stitch, go down the center of your stitch on top, down the center and out the back. So only one loop is over your hook. Yarn over and pull that loop through the stitch. Then pull the first loop through the second and third loop on your hook. That is the yarn over slip stitch or the half double slip stitch. Now all we need to do is repeat this, working one yarn over slip stitch in the back loop only of every stitch across. So yarn over, insert your hook into the top of the stitch and out the back. 
yarn over and pull up a loop. Pull the first loop through the second and third loop on your hook. And simply repeat this in every stitch across. When you reach the end of row two, after working a yarn over slip stitch in every stitch across in the back loop only, then we are going to chain one and turn our work. And for row three, we are going to work a half double crochet in the back loop only of every stitch across. That yarn over slip stitch gives us a nice, almost knit like look stripe down our blanket. So now working the half double crochet stitch in the back loop only of every stitch across. And that is all you really need to know for this project is that you're going to be repeating row two which is the yarn over slip stitch in the back loop only across, and row three, which is your half double crochet in the back loop only across, until your blanket is as long as you'd like it to be. So I'm just finishing up row three, and now all I'm going to do is simply repeat rows two and three until I have the number of rows I need for the desired width of my blanket. On the side of the screen, I'm gonna put the different row counts. This is the total number of rows in your blanket for the different size blankets that you can make. Keep in mind that this is based off of the gauge that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So for an example, I made a small throw blanket that's in the photos and I worked a total of 77 rows. Here's my finished sample swatch. You do want to make sure that you end with a row three, which is all half double crochet. And then you would just fasten off your yarn. So I'm just going to clip this and then I'm going to pull that last yarn in to the last loop on my hook to secure it. And then you would use a yarn needle or a smaller hook in order to weave in that end. So here is one way to weave in your end using a small hook. I am just going to take my hook and push it under a few of the strands of yarn and then grab my yarn in and pull it underneath those strands of yarn. And ideally you would like to work this back and forth three times, but if it does get too bulky, you might pull it down a row so that you're kind of working more in a zigzag versus just back and forth. But yes, this is how you would just use another yarn needle or sorry, another hook in order to weave in your ends. So now I'm gonna show you how to add fringe. This is completely optional, but um, I just wanted you to know just in case you want to. You're gonna start by cutting three pieces of a strand of yarn that's about 10 inches or so. I'm just kind of using my hand to measure. A really easy way to do this is to find a book that's about 10 inches wide and wrap it around the book and then clip the ends. But I'm just making three for now. So these are our three yarn strands. We're just gonna fold them in half. And the way that I was going to add fringe to this blanket is to only add fringe to the ends of the half double crochet rows so that there's a little bit of room in between our fringe pieces. You can use as many strands as you'd like for the fringe. I believe I'm just gonna use two for this example. I think the pattern talks about using three, but the choice is completely up to you. Now I'm gonna insert my hook into my project you might want to notice that I am going to actually flip over my project. I want the pretty stripe side facing away from me. I'm gonna insert my hook underneath one of the half double crochet rows, just that last double crochet of that row. And then just pull the fold of those two strands of yarn up and through the stitch. Now I'm going to use my hook to pull all four yarn ends through the loop on my hook. 
and then simply pull that tight. And that's how you add a nice fringe to the end of your blanket. Now you would just add fringe to the end of every half double crochet row on two sides of your blanket. And if you're wanting to add fringe, then your blanket is completely done. If you do add fringe, you can clip the yarn ends to make them the same length at the end. I definitely get all your fringe together before you start clipping. So here is the sample with all the fringe attached, just so you can see what it looks like. But I also think this blanket looks beautiful without fringe, so it is completely up to you on if you want to fuss with that or not. I really hope you enjoyed the video tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching.